Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. Kaushal this side and I hope you guys are doing well. Today, we'll be taking you through CSS Z index property. This property we have already used earlier, but some of you guys might get confused what Z index property is and when to use it. So in today's tutorial, we are going to clear all your doubts regarding the CSS Z index property. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have regular updates on multiple programming videos. So if you are a programmer and if you want to learn something new, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates from Simply Code. So without any further delay, let's get started. So the Z index property in web design refers to the stacking order of elements on a web page. Now imagine a stack of paper where each piece of paper represents an element on a web page such as we have text box, images, buttons and a lot more other things. So the Z index property determines which element is on the top of the stack and therefore which one will be visible. So a higher Z index property or we can say a higher Z index value means the element will be higher up in the stack and will be more visible to the user. For example, if an element has a Z index value of 10, it will be higher up in the stack and more visible than an element with a Z index property of 5. So let me just show it to you with the help of a simple example. Fine. So what we are going to do is we are going to create two div tags here. So it's just the basic example, the most basic example. So we are going to write here div. Let me just remove this Z index property. One thing to mention here is the Z index property always works along with the position property. So if your position is absolute, then only the Z index property will work. So we'll write here div, let's say class is box1 and we are not going to write anything over here. Fine, now let's do one thing, let's style this box as well. So let me just write here box1, this is the class and let me just use the height, width and some other properties. So let me just write here height as 120 pixels and then we have width as 120 pixels again. Then just write here border. Border is going to be one pixel solid in nature and black in color. Fine. So here you can see we have a box. Let's use the background color property as well. So I'll write here background color as any color of your choice. So let's say we have aqua. Now one thing to write here is the position. Position we are going to fix it as absolute. So we have already covered this position property in the previous video. So if you guys haven't watched those videos yet, I'll recommend you guys to go through that. So just save the program and here you can see we have a box. Fine. Now the next thing we are going to do is we are going to write here div class as box2. So we are going to give you an example of how the CSS Z index property work. So I'll just copy this box one from here. I'll paste it here. I'll change the value, the class name to box two. I'll remove the position property for now. And I'll change the color. So let's say the color we are using is red for this box. Save it. So here you can see it's not visible. The box is not visible. Fine, if I write here position and if I write here absolute, save it, you can see the box, the second box is visible, the red one is visible and the blue one is not visible. So this is because the Z index property is default for both the boxes here and the one that will appear later in the code will get priority, will be stacked over the other. So now what we are going to do is we are going to set the Z index property. Now if I want the box, if I want box one to be visible to the user, what I'll have to do is I'll have to write here Z index and give some value. So let's say Z index value can be negative as well. Fine. So let's say if I if I'm writing here two as the Z index value for this, and I'll write here Z index. Fine. Now what I will do is I'll give the Z index property as one to box 2 because we want to show the box 1 fine so this the index value is higher than this one right z index value 2 is higher than z index value 1 so the box with z index value as 2 will be shown will appear on top so if i save it here you can see the box is changed to blue color because the z index value of with of box 1 with the class as box 1 is 2 which is higher than the z index value of box 2 so keep this thing in mind 
reindex value is used to stack elements on a web page. So the CSS, let me tell you this again, the CSS reindex property specifies the stack order of an element and it's an integer value. So we can use negative, positive, zero, any value we want. An element with a higher z index is always stacked above an element with a lower z index value. Elements with the same z index value are stacked in the order in which they appear in the HTML document. Keep this thing in mind guys. So the default z index value is always auto which means the element will be stacked according to its order in HTML code. So if an element is not positioned, its z index property has no effect. To use the z index property, the element must have a position value of absolute, relative or fixed. Again, positions, we have already covered this property in a separate video. So please go through it guys. And now let me just take you through a proper example of CSS z index property. Fine. So that it will be easy for you guys to understand what z index property is. Now you guys already know what z index property is. It is used to stack various HTML elements on a web page. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a div. Okay. I'll add here div. Let's use the class name as header for this div. And let's use something like this. Save it. And here you can see we have header. Now what we are going to do is we are going to use this div tag again. I'll change the class name. So let's say I'm writing over here content. And I'm writing again content over here so this is another div and one more div fine so I'll write over here pop-up for this one so let's assume we are going to create a pop-up menu so we'll write over here pop-up save it and here you can see we have three values so there are three div tags fine so this is the style uh, element HTML element we have on a HTML document so let's just style these three classes. Header, we are going to start with header. Position, we are going to use absolute for header. We have top, so top we are going to set as zero, let's say. Left, left we are going to set as zero again. And let's use width, width is going to be 100%. So we have covered this in the previous part where we came across CSS unit. So you guys should know the difference between percentage and pixels. So I'll write over here height, height we are going to set as 60 pixels for this one. Let's use the background color as blue and let's give it a z index value. Fine. So we'll write over here z index and let's say the value we are giving is 10. Save it. So here you can see the header. So it's color is I guess a little dark. So we are going to use light color. So aqua you can see header over here. Now after header we have content. So we have used the content class I guess for our content. So yeah we have the class name as content. Position again. So I'm going to write here position as absolute. Then we have top. Top what we'll do. The height is 60 pixels. So let's say height is 60 pixels. And left again I'm going to use as zero. Save it. So here you can see we have the content visible now. Width I'm going to write here 100% of this total browser area. And then we have height. Now use the calc function. So we have already covered this calc function as well. So I'll write over here 100% minus 60 pixels. Fine. So 100% is the total 100% and 60 pixels is the height of header. So the height is going to be this. So, okay, let me just show you. I'll write over here background color as beach. Let's differentiate it. So this is the content area. Fine. Now, give the z index as well. The index value, let's say I'm setting it to 5. Save it. And now we are done with two of them. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to show you how pop-up will appear on top of these two. What we have to do? We have to set the z index value over 10. So we have the z index value as 10 for header. We have the z index value as 5 for content. So it means that if if there is a condition, if there is any situation when we have to choose either the header will come over or the content will come over, then definitely the header will come over because the z index value is 10. So we'll write position as absolute again for pop-up. Top, 
we are going to set as 20% then we have left as 30% and then we will set the width as how much we can set 40% we want the pop-up to be present at the top of both header and content fine so we'll write over here after width height height we are going to use 50% okay I said 50 but written uh, wrote 40 over there so it's 50% background color we can set any let's choose a darker color or we can say let's choose yellow fine so it will be visible save it and you can see it's not visible as of now use the z index property set the value above 10 because we have used 10 over here fine if you are using 1 and 2 for them then if we are going to set pop up as 3 then it will be fine but right now we are going to use 15 save it and here you can see pop up is present at the top why because of the z index property the z index property has value 15 for pop-up class so pop-up will be present at the top so i hope you guys got it so in short the z index property helps determine the stacking order of elements on a web page and allows web designers to control which element are visible and which are hidden so i hope you guys must have got a good idea about the css z index property so that's all for this video guys see you in another video and if you enjoyed watching this video then do give it a thumbs up if you have any doubts related to any of the topics we have covered in this particular video then please feel free to drop them down in the comment section below and we'll definitely answer them for you so thank you so much for being here guys see you next time until then keep coding and stay tuned to simply code thank you <laughs>